In this video, we're going to go over some battle simulator results for the new legendary cavalry commander. That's Huo Chubing. And I was really surprised that although he performed well, his performance was not amazing. I was kind of expecting it to be better. So stick around in this video for a review of what parameters I used in the battle simulator, how Huo Chubing performed, and which combos I think might be the best. Although it's certainly not conclusive, we'll also draw some conclusions. What does this mean about how Huo Chubing will perform? Let's get going. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and what you see before you is a tool made by another player called the Battle Simulator. This thing very accurately represents how battles perform in Rise of Kingdoms. And although there are obviously differences between a player-made version of the combat in Rise of Kingdoms and the actual combat in Rise of Kingdoms, the person who's made this has put a lot of time into trying to make it uh, very accurately represent the real result of what would happen in Rise of Kingdoms. And there are always some weird mechanics that sometimes throw off the way a calculation ought to go, but for the most part, this battle simulator is pretty accurate, as long as you put in some accurate parameters for what you're trying to test. So in this video, I'm going to show you the test results with Huo Chubing, and again, I was surprised sort of what those results were. So use the timestamps in the description to navigate to the part of the video you're most interested in. The first part is just going to be reviewing these parameters because they matter a lot. From there, I'll go into the test results and try to figure out which Huo Chu Bing combo is actually the best. And then lastly, we'll draw some conclusions because I think there's a really obvious conclusion as to what all of this data is at least telling me. And it could be that, you know, maybe the calculation's wrong. Maybe my parameters are wrong. And any of these things could change the results. So let's get started by reviewing the parameters I put in. I assumed a number of things for this test today. And... You know, we'll start from the top and make our way to the bottom. The first thing I want to talk about is that I did 210,000 troop capacity. I wanted the battle to run faster. And as I'll show you in just a second, these battles happen in real time. So you still do need to take time to run these battles. But I would say overall that this process is so much easier than what I used to be doing. Oh my God. Like I used to actually test commanders. You know how long that takes? You have to actually, like, find people that have the commanders, have the equipment, check their talent builds. Yo, that took time. This is great. I, this thing is such a time saver for me. It's incredible. Now, 210,000 troop capacity I went with because, theoretically, more troops might make the battle run longer. But I also wanted to just use a number y'all would recognize, even though I went with, as you can see down here, VIP level 17 to 18 buffs. The reason it's listed as 17-18 is that from a combat standpoint, you don't actually gain anything extra uh, at that point. The only thing you gain extra is troop capacity, but you manually set that up top. I went with the Ottoman Civilization for both because that's the best for open field. If you didn't know that, you might watch my Best Civilization video. Card will be up in the top, but also in the end screen later. From there, I went with the default recommendations for all your building buffs, alliance uh, buffs, and holy sites. Because I think that just assumes you've got, like, all the holy sites from your kingdom, one of each. And here is where the assumptions start to get more interesting. Uh, for the city skins, runes, KVK tech, and armaments, I assumed that you were using a 5% health city theme. I assumed that no one had a rune, even though I probably should go assume that you have some health. I assumed that you had all of your attack technology maxed from KVK. And I also assumed that you had 12% attack, 12% defense, and 12% health from your armaments. Now, why did I make these assumptions about stats? The stats are actually the most important assumptions in this entire thing because stats have diminishing returns in the game. I actually proved this by running tests in-game, which takes a long time to do, and did the math around all of the tests to prove that the more of a stat you have, the less benefit you get from additional points in that stat. So the reason this is important is because it skews attack to be actually a weaker stat point for point than other things. So I wanted to put all those assumptions in for how much punch you had. 
I also went and assumed you had a 10% defense token because that's meta. And I also gave three points of iconic stats to each piece of equipment you had. So you basically had an iconic crystal on every piece of equipment. And on the topic of equipment, none of the equipment is crit. I went with the meta set, which was actually the default recommendation from this tool. And I added a ring and a horn. I really didn't want to add a ring because it just adds randomness. But I really wanted to add the horn because that can theoretically dramatically change the way a combat goes based on rage mechanics in the game. And the talent build I went with, I will explain as we go through the reports. But I generally used meta talent builds as provided by the tool. And these do align with the talent builds that I go and use. Now, just to illustrate how easy this is, once you get your parameters set up, you're cruising, baby. All you have to do is hit start battle. And it just starts simulating. And it's that easy. And you can even batch these results. So I can say, run me three test results. And then when it's done, it's like, it stops doing calculations and I can just review the battle reports, which is pretty cool. So this I find to be, again, I think easier than the testing I used to be doing because I can do this by myself. I don't need to spot check other people's stuff. Um, and assuming that it's accurate, I can get results, I think a little bit faster than I used to. Although there's obviously like, a lot of tweaking going on with the assumptions that you make. And I think there is one assumption that I do want to change because although I assumed that you're in KVK, let me just end this particular battle. Um, I didn't add a bunch of all damage as though you've captured the ruined crusader fort. And I think that's relevant. But on the topic of stats, I added the same stats to both sides. So the only sort of variable stats will come from the commanders themselves, and you don't have to manually enter that after you select your commanders, which is kind of cool. Now, I know this is a lot of warm-up to like, okay, show me the results, but this is really important for the accuracy of the results, and I wanted to lay out all these assumptions. Let's show you the results, though. Okay, baby, first up is the combo that I thought would be the best Huo Chubing combo, and that's Joan Prime. Now, Huo needs to be the primary because he does more active skill damage when he's the primary. And I ran it up against the the basically, I don't want to call it the gold standard, but like I picked the best cavalry combo to date. That's Nevsky Joan. So if you can beat Nevsky Joan, I'm impressed. And Huo Chu Bing delivers. Huo with Joan won with about 4,000 sevs in his favor. Now look. I, I don't want to say that this is the the be-all, end-all, final differential you should expect to see. We're just trying to find trends here, okay? We're just trying to find trends. The next report, I did everything in triplicate, okay? So we did it again, 23,700 to 25,400 in favor of the Huo Chu Bing. And then we did it again, 23,100 to 25,600. So, so far, my theory about Huo Chu Bing is looking pretty good. And this doesn't really account for the fact that Huo Chu Bing is an accelerator for Joan's buffs, which should be good for the rest of your team. But then I decided, hey, I want to run, I want to run William. Because William is probably the easiest replacement. I mean, you take XY with William, which is what people were doing, and you just put Huo in front instead. And this did well. 22,700 to about 26,000. We did it again, 24,400 to about 25,000. And we did it again, 20,092 uh, to 27,150. Now, I don't want to analyze these results too in depth here, right? But they're pretty similar. Like, they're not that different. They're close enough that, like, eh, you could use the combo one way or another. I would need to run more iterations of battles and take averages, which I, I didn't really think... We're, we're at the stage where I want to do that yet in order to kind of understand, statistically speaking, is one better than the other. My impression here is, which hero, which commander do you want to have their buffs accelerated? Because remember, Huo Chubing has a reduced rage requirement. So if you think the William buff is better, hey, yo, pairing with William is good to go. If you think that the Joan buff is better, you could accelerate that if you wanted. Okay, pick who you wanted to accelerate and then accelerate it. That was sort of my thinking. But then I thought, okay, but even though I would generally say you take Huo Chubing and he's the primary for one pair, you take Nevsky and he's the primary for another, hey, what if you smash the two together? And um, yeah, no, it makes magic. It sure does. Huo Chubing with Nevsky. Smashing Nevsky with Joan. 
uh, you're looking at 19,900 to 27,000. Now, let me be clear. At this point, we've moved in the direction of a combo that is, dare I say, selfish, okay? And that's selfish because it's just doing single target damage. It's no longer buffing the team. It's just going all in on shredding. And hey, there is value to that, okay? I don't generally lean toward that, but there is value to that, okay? And for people that are like, I want the one best cavalry combo, I still think there's a question mark here because look, like Joan buffs are good. And this doesn't account for the fact that Joan buffs other, other marches. It doesn't account for the fact that William buffs other marches, right? So this is just mano a mano 1v1, 19,900 to 27,400. Then we do about 23,000 to 25,500. And then we did 20,000 to 27,000. Now, these results across all the different combos, they're pretty damn similar. Like, they weren't that far off. I would say this is looking like Huo Chu Bang with Nevsky is the best combo. But I wanted to try against some other things. I mean, look, as fun as it is to battle against cavalry, how does it do against archers? How does it do against infantry? So I stuck with the Huo Chu Bang and Nevsky combo under the assumption that it doesn't get much better than that, probably, for 1v1 goodness. So here we go against Boudica. Now, in this case, I used the Archer talent build using the Archer tree, which I think is a solid build, um, but might be better suited for rallying uh, compared to the full skill build. So I, I did two rounds of testing because, again, I find it easier to just push a button, switch the way the test is print, uh, sort of configured once you know how it works. Then I actually like, you know, do all the hoop love of running real life tests, but whatever. Um, so how does it do? 21,600 to 27,800. Oh, oh, okay. Crushing the archers so far. That's Boudica with Zuge Leon, which, although this isn't the best dueling archer combo, I mean, these, this is like the best archer combo as I think people would define it for the meta, right? So uh, here we go in the next report. 21,000 to 28,000. We're crushing over here. And then 22,000 to 27,000. Yo. Okay. So did even better against the archers. And you'd expect that. Huo Chu Bing does 5% extra damage to archers. Yo. And, and hey, 5% damage is a big deal. But from there, I said, hey, give me this other talent build you see right over here. We got the Boudicca talent build that goes all in on the skill tree. And it turns out that, well, for this first report, we did even better. <laughs> 18,400, uh, almost 18,500 to 29,500 is a pretty big deal. But then, 18,900 to 29,700, hold up. Then we got an anomaly. The Boudica Zuge Leong actually won. And this was 26,000 to 23,700. So the first loss of all the testing I did, and of any of the testing I did, was, was here. Th th this was surprising to me. And there are some other losses that are about to be savage, actually. So, so far... Huo is looking good. But then we, we paired against the infantry and ooh, Sargon with Skippy delivered a savage beatdown. Not once, okay? Okay, not twice, <laughs> but three times. Just freaking shredding. And I was like, wow, that's pretty brutal. Um, what if I just switch a Roo over here to use William as the secondary for Huo Chu Bing? Well, what if we just try it, all right? Because we're getting wrecked over here. This was 26,000 to 22,000, 28,000 to 20,000, and 29,000 to not even, it's 18 and a half thousand, okay? Sargon with Skippy was shredding. And hey, look, Sargon is like the best single target hero commander in the game. He's kind of nuts. And Skippy is busted. So like, yeah, like, yeah. Like I kind of expect to see something like that. And this combo is actually not greedy. Skippy is doing a debuff, um, and and Sargon is doing a debuff, and this benefits your whole team. So I thought this was a pretty impressive result for all the Sargon haters out there. He does he does some stuff, okay? He does stuff. <laughs> I, get, I get those downfalls to the way his kit works, but he's the infantry Tommy, and Tommy is still legit. In fact, without, you know, getting too much into it, you may recall that Baba TC Ataturk swapped to using a Tommy in his 7 versus 7 duel versus Leopard. And it worked pretty damn well. I'll have a card in the end screen. I'll remind you of it later. So I wanted to switch this around. I said, yo, give me something different here. Instead of Huo with Nevsky, I did Huo with William. 
because I thought for sure that's what I was going to run. And whoo, whoo, the William just freaking gets shredded. 30,700 to 14,500. 30,000 to 16,700. And 30,500 to 16,000. GG. So what can we take away from this? I mean, these reports, okay? And there's a couple things that could be true here that we just need to talk about. First of all, it's a battle simulator, and it's freaking awesome. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Um, I'm not sponsored by, by the maker of this tool. I signed up for the patron, signed up for the legendary tier, and that gave me access to this tool, okay? Which, which is something that I run on my computer. And I'll, I'll have a link in the description if you want to check out the tool. Uh, you know, I paid three bucks. It, for me, the value here is immense. And if he had a higher tier, I would have paid it. <laughs> but here we are, Battle Simulator. And I, I, this is not a criticism of the maker of the thing, but there could be an issue, or or I say I, I should say a difference between how Huo performs in the Battle Simulator versus how Huo performs in game. That is possible, okay? But you know what I think is more likely here? Do you know what I think these reports actually mean? You see, there's a little secret about Huo's fourth skill and his awakening skill that I actually missed. So let me draw some conclusions here. And before I do, let me just review with you the way that his awakening expertise skill works. Because I think the real takeaway here is that Huo Chu Bing is not meant for duels. He's meant for, for smashing, bro, for slaying stuff. Let me explain. Upon looking more closely at the skill reveal from Huo Chu Bing, there is something that didn't catch my attention, okay? And it's the expertise skill. It says that Huo Chu Bing gets 35% defense when he's attacking enemy troops. That's open field. 25% more skill damage. And whenever their troop defeats an enemy, it games the autumn wind effect. And some of its slightly wounded troops are healed. And I thought, oh, you know, I read it kind of like, kind of like this. I was like, oh, yeah, it gains the autumn wind effect, which is this healing. No, 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 no. The autumn wind effect resets the rage of this commander's troop all temporary buffs and debuffs, and the amount of time it's been in combat? Oh, hold, hold up, wait a minute. That's very different, okay? Now, what does this mean? Well, if you defeat an enemy's troop, resetting your rage and, and all these other things could be pretty bad. Okay, it could actually be terrible. Alternatively, you can harness it to your advantage. Now remember, let's say you're about to use your active skill. You reset the rage of the troop, and then you're at zero rage. Let's say you're using Huo Chu Bing's active skill, and your rage is reset, and all your buffs and debuffs are removed, and you time and combat is removed. Will your secondary commander still use their active skill? Well, how does this work? Um, there's so many questions I have about this. If I use Joan as the secondary, remember her fourth skill gives you an extra attack for the first time. Uh, you, you're in combat, and then the third time, and the fifth time, right? Every other skill cycle. Does that mean that if I if I slay a target, could I like have the extra skill activation from Joan from her fourth skill, and then have the combat reset, and then get it right away again? The thing that I think Huo Chu Bing will benefit from to make him really powerful is actually slaying enemies, and I think in that context. His reports are going to look a lot better, especially if this works in a mostly favorable way and is giving mostly benefits like Joan getting to do her thing all over again with the double skill activation. I think in that regard, the Huo-Joan combo looks really, really, really compelling. And it looks compelling, again, if we can get her extra activation. If it doesn't, then maybe we'll do some different pairings and I'll have to play around some more to see kind of how this sort of best shakes out. But the other thing that's listed here that's all just like a huge head scratcher for me is all temporary buffs and debuffs are removed. Okay, so debuffs are removed too? Like, this is a double-edged sword. Removing all debuffs when you're in a big murder ball is actually insane. That's super valuable. But removing all buffs kind of sucks. I, yo, why are you devaluing my Trajan? I'm trying to buff stuff over here. So, I'm trying to figure out, like, how this is actually going to unfold. And remember, when this commander leaves combat, they and they re-enter combat, I guess I should say, they have a 150 rage cost reduction on the active skill, and they do bonus skill damage. Like, they pop off 
when they first enter combat for 15 seconds. But after they've been in combat for a while, then they start to lose value. They only get 10% normal attack. So I think Huo Chubing, my conclusion, is that he is not actually a commander you can test like this and really learn as much as you'd like. Sure, there are valuable things we learn, right? That, yeah, yeah, maybe Nevsky's better. That, that hey, William's pretty good, okay? And, and Joan is also pretty good. All those combos were fine, I thought. I don't think one was so much better that I was like, wow, that's got to be it, okay? Um, and the other thing that I think I take away from this is that this gets really weird for rallies, right? Because, like, can't you one-troop your own rally to reset the rage? Can't, like, the enemy one-troop the rally? Is that a good thing for the enemy or a bad thing for the enemy? Like, there is a lot of weirdness to Huo Chu Bang that still will only be unpacked with in-game testing. And I've got great news for you. Your boy Chiskool Gaming over here, he's going to do in-game testing. I don't know why I'm talking about myself in third person, but I will test a expertise to Huo Bing the night that he arrives in game, and, and I might even max him myself. So consider subscribing to the channel if that's something you want to see. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on the vid and consider subscribing. Alternatively, if you want to see that 7v7 I was talking about where I'm like, hey, that bonus skill damage, right? That that bonus skill damage pretty good. You might want to check that out on Sargon, on Tommy. I'll have a card in the end screen in just a second that shows you that crazy 7v7. And alternatively, if you're like, whoa, Huo Chubang, what do all of his skills even do? I'll have a card in the end screen for that one in a second as well.